right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I've got for you guys today, let's talk a little bit about Derek Lunsford. He's posted a couple physique updates here around eight weeks out from the Olympia, actually just under that. And I feel like Derek has gotten a little bit lost in all this conversation about the Olympia with the, with the talk of all these mass monsters like Big Rami, uh, Michael Crizzo, Andrew Jack, Nick Walker. Where does Derek land in that mix? And I think in this latest update, and if you guys didn't know, I'm sure you probably do know, but Derek announced that he was going to be competing in the Men's Open Olympia this year after winning last year's 212 Olympia. He wound up getting the special invite to compete in Open this year. So he's, he's obviously working with Hani Rambod, who is now working with Chris Bumstead. He's also working with Hadi Chupin, just to name a few. And I, I really do think that Derek is one of the premier bodybuilders in this lineup. And I think this video, this posing video here, um, is one of the reasons why Derek is so good. Look at his lats in that front double bicep pose. He doesn't look like he's a 212 bodybuilder. He's got this illusion because of his V-taper, because of the size and width of his back. It's one of the things that makes him able to stand with these bigger guys. And that's what we saw with that Pittsburgh pro guest posing that he did earlier on in the year with Nick Walker, Brandon Curry, and Hunter Labrada. And he looked big next to those guys. And he was weighing like 260 pounds at that guest posing. But Derek has these attributes of his physique that make him not look small. So the question of whether a 212 guy can come into an open lineup and do good has already been answered multiple times. Sean Carita answered that question. Hadi Chupin came from 212. William Bonac came from 212. Just because they're shorter doesn't mean they cannot put on size and still be able to stand with the bigger guys that a lot of them, a lot of the bigger guys are simply just heavier because they're taller. They have a bigger frame to add muscle to. But when you're talking about proportion and evenly distributed muscle and symmetry, size is not everything in bodybuilding. But granted, with Big Rami being the current champ, size is a lot. But when you have a structure like Derek has, you can create this illusion of looking a lot bigger. And I think we saw that at Pittsburgh and we see it here. I um, mean, eight weeks out, I think he looks extremely impressive. And I don't think that we should forget he's in this lineup because to me, I'm going to do an Olympia prediction video pretty soon. I do one every year. Derek is going to be in my top six. I think Derek will, I think he's going to really impress a lot of people. He's not going to be the biggest guy in that top six. He's not going to be the freakiest guy, but I think his structure and his shape and his symmetry, and the condition that Hani has been bringing him in. Those are the things, those are the weapons that are going to make him extremely dangerous. And I think a lot of people are going to get caught in the, in the crossfire of those weapons. I think he will certainly out-condition guys. I think he will out-pose guys. I think he will out-structure guys because he's so pleasing to look at your eyes are going to be drawn to him over other guys. And I think he has enough size to where there's not a whole lot of guys that are just going to absolutely dominate him on size, aside from maybe a big Rami or a Nick Walker. And even at that guest posing, I wouldn't say that Nick Walker dominated him in terms of size. But that brings me to my next story. I wanted to talk about a couple of the physique updates that we've got of Nick Walker just in the past 24 hours. Two most muscular shots. Well, one is a most muscular and one is him kind of just standing there. And what I would say, the perfect goon light. And even acknowledging that Nick is standing in this crazy lighting, I, it just, he looks insane. The guy, he is a freak. There's no denying that. And I got to say, honestly, in, in the years that I've been doing this YouTube channel, I think this is probably the Olympia that I'm most excited for out of any Olympia in recent memory because there's so many new guys. There's so many guys that are just total brand newcomers to the Olympia could be complete wild cards in this lineup. And we really don't know what's going to happen. How good could Derek really do? We don't know. Derek could be a top three guy. How good could Andrew Jack be? Some people say D Andrew could be a top three guy. How good could Crizzo be if he does get to the Olympia? Crizzo could come in and dominate this thing too. And then on top of that, you've got Nick Walker looking like this. He's a very new guy. We've seen him take fifth last year. A lot of people, myself included, are expecting to see Nick move up from that fifth place spot this year. Then on top of that, you've got Big Rami looking probably the best we've ever seen him look in the lead up to an Olympia. So you've got a champion or a turning defending champion that looks to be at his all-time best. And you've got all these guys chomping at the bit, these newcomers that are really gunning for that title. I think this is going to be an extremely exciting Olympia. And of course, we can't forget about Brandon, Brandon and Hottie, who have been right there for the past couple of years. But it's like, I feel like so many Olympias, um, especially during the time that I've been covering bodybuilding, 
it was like everybody knew Phil was going to win. And it seemed like you kind of had the same guys constantly in those top spots. But we've talked about, you know, how this is kind of the changing of the guard and bodybuilding. And we're starting to see kind of these older guys, um, like we saw with Kai and Phil start to leave. And then we saw, you know, Roley kind of stopped competing. Dennis Wolf stopped competing. Branch Warren stopped competing. And when I first started covering it, those were the guys that were placing ahead of everything, winning everything. Those were the guys that were in the top. And we're seeing those guys be phased out. And these new guys are coming into their prime, and these new guys are winning shows, placing top at the Olympia. And and this is these Olympias recently are kind of the first ones where it's like anything could happen. I think anybody could win, and it's not like you've got this Phil Heath that's winning year after year, and, and we know no one's going to beat him. And speaking of newer guys, you've got Hunter Labrada, who seems like he's doing a guest posing pretty much every weekend, which I think is very impressive. He's posting posing videos almost daily, um, and Hunter. Fourth last year, young guy, new guy. Based on everything that we've seen from Hunter recently, he looks like he's improved tremendously, and he looks like he's got a shot at improving on that fourth place finish from last year. So it's like we really don't know what's going to happen, and I would imagine I think a really incredible call-out would also feature uh, Nick Walker, Hadi Chupin, um, uh, uh, Derek Lunsford, and, and uh, Hunter Labrada. Those four guys are all, they're shorter guys. They've got similar physiques in the term of they're, they're shorter and very, very muscular. Um, and then you got, see, you don't want to forget William Bonac. There's just so many names in this lineup, and all these guys are extremely, extremely good bodybuilders. Anything could happen. There's no, there's certainly not an established top six right now. There's so many guys that could crack it. And you start talking about guys that are like outside of the immediate realm of top six. You got the Ian Valliers. You know what? Let's just go ahead and transition into talking about the actual competitor list for the Olympics so I can show you guys what I'm talking about here. It's really, this is a really impressive lineup. Nick Walker, Nathan Diasha, who I don't think is doing it. I actually talked to some people that train at the same gym as Nathan um, after that video where Nathan said he wasn't sure if he's doing the Olympia. Um, and they said based on how they see him looking in the gym, they don't think he's going to compete. Um, but you've got Big Rami, Brandon Curry, Hadi Chupin, Hunter Labrada, Sean Clarita, who we don't know yet if he's doing 212 or open, Regan Grimes, Samson Dowda, Raphael Brandau, Angel Calderon Frias, who came from 212. We don't know for sure whether he's doing 212 or open. Joel Thomas, William Bonak. Don't forget about Blessing Awodabu. He's in here as well. Charles Griffin is in here as well. Muhammad Shaban, Hassan Mustafa, Muhammad Alsnor. Vitor Boff, Andrea Presti, Ian Valliere, Antoine Viant. Don't forget about Akeem Williams, who was in that first call just a few years ago. Chinedu Andrew Obieka, which is Andrew Jacked. You've got Vlad Suharuchko, Derek Lunsford, Patrick Johnson, Tonio Burton, who just won the Legion Sports Festival, and James Hollingshead, who just won the Tsunami Pro. Then in the point standings, you've got Justin, Andrea, and Theo Laguerrier. And I would imagine... You've got the Prague Pro this weekend, so we're potentially going to see Michael Crizzo's name added to this list. And then in a couple of weeks, you've got the Romania Pro, which Brett Wilkin is doing. So you're probably going to see Brett Wilkin's name added to this list. I don't know if there's any other qualifiers besides those shows between now and the Olympia, because the Olympia is rapidly approaching. It's in the middle of December. Actually, it's a week before Christmas, which honestly, I really wish they would move it back to the fall, September, October. And I want to get your guys' opinion on that in the comment section below. How many of you guys are not going to the Olympia because it's a week before Christmas because of the timing of it? I feel like you know, a lot of people might not be too worried about getting the virus at this point, but there's still a lot of people that probably don't want to bring it home to their families the next week for Christmas. Whereas in the fall, especially September, October, there's not a whole lot of people that really have a whole lot going on um, in terms of getting together with families because there's no holidays. I don't know. That was just something I was thinking about recently. I don't like the week before Christmas Olympia thing. And I'll say for this one, guys, I'm curious to hear not just your top six, but in the comments below, I want to see you guys predict your top 10 in order. Who do you think is going to be outside that top six as well? But I want to see your placings first through 10th in the comments below based on this competitor list so far. And if you guys want to include Michael Crizzo and Brett Wilkin, because I think likely they're going to get there, um, include them if you want. Which does bring me to the final story. We had one more update from Michael Crizzo just, I guess, two days out now um, from his pro debut in Prague. Just a quick side profile of his arm there. Um, I'm I'm really excited to see him compete. He, to me, looks a lot better in some of the updates that we've seen from him recently than he looked um, going into that Olympia amateur. And I think we are going to see a professional conditioned 
peeled version of Michael Crizzo in Prague, um, and I'm excited to see him on the Olympia stage. I really do think he's going to be tough to beat um, at this Prague Pro, and I likely think he will pick up the Olympia qualification there. But we'll see. Anything could happen. It could be a premature prediction, but I guess let me know what you guys think about that one too in the comment section down below. Make sure you leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet already. As always, I love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power signing out. All right, guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also, check out my Instagram at Nick Strength Power. My Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power. My secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, give that one a look. And all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day. Dancing in the good light Everybody's feeling warm and bright It's such a fine and natural sight Every Dancing in the good light Everybody's feeling warm and bright It's such a fine and natural sight Everybody's dancing in